Okay, so it's been a while since I've posted a tutorial, and uh, today I think I'm going to cover something we all need in our lives. Attachments. Anyway, we're going to talk about attaching things. I got a little bitty example here just to kind of throw it together and show you guys. And here it is. Cool. So basically what I'm showing is how to take an object that has its own inherent animation and when it hits a surface, it sticks to it perfectly. And this is kind of tricky, trickier than you'd think. Like something like this has to be set up for every time two objects interact with each other when it's not a simulation. Anytime a character needs to pick something up, you know, it can it can be really tricky. So just here's an example uh, of like an arrow hitting an undulating surface and how the arrow will stick to that surface perfectly, you know. So you see that as the surface rolls, the arrow follows the, the alignment of the polygon almost perfectly. Let's go to wireframe form and check it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow all this away. I'm gonna start at this plane and I'm gonna show you how to hook these arrows up one at a time. And really you can do whatever you want with it from there. So let's get going. Okay, so back to square one. We've got our arrow right here. Just a little quick thing that I threw together. And here we have a little plane that I made with a simple wave modifier that just ripples through. Nothing special. Anyone can set this up. Uh, that's not really the purpose. So I'm going to assume you don't really know anything about how attachments work. And I'm going to go from here with these two objects having already been built and show you step by step how this shit comes together, man, because I honestly feel like it's more complicated than it should be. <laughs> so the first thing you got to do is build a point controller for the arrow. Now, in order to build that, you're going to want to go over to create and then down and across to helpers inside helpers. You're going to see point and that is your point controller. I'm going to go to my top view. I'm just going to draw one out. There it is. Now, this doesn't really do anything. It doesn't show up if you render. It's just sort of a dummy and you can make the size whatever, you can turn parts of it on and off. I'll just keep it as is because not only does it give me a cube so I can orient stuff, but it gives me these inner lines. It's just, it's just good the way it is. So what I wanna do is I wanna stick this to this surface. Now, what a lot of people try to do is they'll grab it and then they'll come to like link and they'll link it to it and then they'll realize that that doesn't work. Even though when you move the base object around, it does stick to it, but it doesn't inherit any animation from the actual surface of the geometry. So that's clearly not going to work. Come to here. You want to unlink something from an object. You just hit unlink. And now the big question, how do I get this to stick to here? Well, first thing you got to do is have your point selected. And I'm going to turn this on so we can see a little bit better. OK, so Here's how we get this guy onto the surface of this object. And it's pretty easy, trust me. So basically right now we are in the create panel where we just made our point. The Where we're looking for is you need to have this object selected and then you're gonna come over to motion. Inside motion, there is the assign controller tab. We're gonna open that up and inside here are different controllers you can apply to the transforms and position and rotation, all kinds of stuff. But what we're going to do right now, just to get this stuck on here, is we're going to select position. We're going to go to the assigned controller tab right here that is good and tiny and hidden because that's really convenient. This is going to open up an entire menu of stuff. Now, the first one, we're just going to grab the first one, which is attachment. We're going to hit OK, and this is going to change the options underneath position. So. Now, underneath attachment parameters, it asks us to pick an object. We're going to pick this guy. But we're not done, because even though it is sort of there, it's not really there yet. We have to set the position also. So when you click this, all this changes again. And as you drag across the surface, you can see that this object is perfectly aligning to whatever polygon it's hitting. And wherever you stop, bam, it's going to set a keyframe and it's on there now. Cool. But we're not done yet. So now you've got a few options, right? I'm going to go ahead and freeze this guy 
And essentially, if you wanted an arrow to fly in and hit this wall, you wouldn't be linking the arrow to this object. You would be linking it to this one. So we can just take this, go to our align tool up here at the top. We're going to select on to here. Cool, snapped it right to it. Let's turn this guy around to 180. And bam. So now we know that on frame zero, this guy hits and we can stick it to this object. But let's back it up a little bit to frame 50. All right, we're going to do this again. We're just going to align it. Now it's on there. So in order to get this guy to stick to this, you can you can now use just a normal link. You can link it just like this and it's on there, right? But you're going to find that if you want the arrow to fly and hit on frame 50 and you set a keyframe and then you back this up like this and do like this, what can happen is this. See this, how it, since the surface is warping and it's linked the entire time to this object, as that object moves, this rotation is being inherited, whether it's this far away or this close. So it's like it's just screwing up your animation, essentially, because it's linked to this the entire time. So what you want is for it to link on the frame that it hits and not be linked to it any time before that. <laughs> so since this isn't going to work, I'm going to turn off animation within and I'm going to grab my arrow and I'm going to unlink it. And you can see it's it's already it's still messed up. So we're going to delete this keyframe too. We're going to say it hits right here. So now the next step, because it's got to get more complicated, it just works, is we're going to grab the arrow. We're going to come up to animation. We're going to go to constraints. We're going to go to link constraint and we're going to link it. It gives you this error, this line, this dotted line, and we're going to link it to the point controller. Bam. So what that did was change this menu right here. So what this is telling you is that on frame 50, this arrow is linked to the point. Now, if you want it to unlink, we're going to back up one frame. And we're going to say link to world. OK, now what happened <laughs> is even though it shifted the position of our arrow, you can see that before it's not moving and then after it's moving. So all we got to do now is just go to the frame that we like, snap it back to the center, and then there it is. So now animating the object is really, really easy. You just hit in to turn on auto key. We're going to set a keyframe. This is before it hits the object one frame before. And then we're going to back up four or five frames. And then we're going to let this guy back a little bit. Turn animation off. Bam. Now we've got an arrow. That easy. Now, you can kind of go crazy with this. You can do it really whatever you want with it, essentially. If you get to the point where you want to make more arrows, all you got to do now, since it's all set up in a really easy controller, is select these two. Right click, clone, hit OK, grab this uh, point, and it doesn't matter which one, truthfully. And now that we have a set position inside of our motion panel, we can just move this kind of wherever. And this is the first thing I want to show you because you're going to run into this. Now, there's a keyframe set on frame zero. <clears throat> and it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to animate the position of this object? I'm going to go ahead and hit no, because you kind of don't want to do that. So if you go to where the keyframe is or move the keyframe to where you are, you can still move this guy around. Now, it's going to make this arrow freak out a little bit, but it's not going to ask you that question anymore. And then you can just take this arrow. Snap him to this guy and then stick him on there. Anyway, it's just that easy. So just take these guys, get rid of them. And another cool thing, because of what we got going on with this whole point controller thing is you can do kind of stuff like this. Oops, oh, my rotation was off. What an idiot. Uh, I can take a box and do this. And then we're going to go, say, hit the in key, set a keyframe, come here, go to here. So it's going to hit. And then maybe let's 
shrink this down. So it hits, and then that passes by. Because what I can do, the second this gets to about here, is I can tell this right here. I can go to in, and I can go add link, grab the box, and now what should happen is it's gonna fly in, hit the thing, box is gonna come, and it's gonna stick to the box. Bam. <laughs> so this is kind of a way of setting up lots of stuff like this. I mean, like I said, anytime you know your character is sort of interacting with multiple things, they gotta pick something up off a table or grab a thing and move it. You know, it can get kind of complicated, but this is one way to handle situations like that. And then if you want to get really clever with it, I, go, I went ahead and set this up with a uh, flex modifier. So it'll go like boom. <laughs> anyway, uh, these are just a couple of tips on how to do this stuff. And uh, I hope it really helps out because you can have a whole lot of fun with it. One more tutorial down. I'm going to try to get back in the habit of this and, uh, you know, not lose my mind in the process. Anyway, hope you learned something. Take care. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.